the fifth pillar of Iman is life after death, the hereafter. First, we'll discuss the life after death in Hinduism and then Islam. The common Hindu, or most of the Hindus, they believe in the cycle of birth, death, rebirth, death, rebirth, known as the samsara. It's also called as the theory of reincarnation or transmigration of soul. And this philosophy of samsara, it came about because the scholars, they could not justify that how could Almighty God be unjust that some human beings are born wealthy, some human beings, they are born poor, some human beings, they have been given health, some have got diseases, so Almighty God cannot be unjust. Therefore, they came with the philosophy of samsara based on the verse of Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 2, verse number 22. It says that as a human being, he changes and throws away the old clothes and wear new clothes. Similarly, the soul throws away the old material body and puts on the new body. A similar message is given in Bhain Hankar Upanishad, part 4, chapter number 4, verse number 3. It says that whenever a caterpillar climbs onto a grass of blade, he jumps onto a new blade. Similarly, a soul takes a new body. So based on these verses of the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads, the scholars, to justify, they had this theory of samsara, cycle of birth, death, rebirth. And they believe in the concept of karma, that is action. Action not only of the body, but action even of the soul. Based on the philosophy, as you sow, so shall you reap. Whatever you sow, you shall reap. They believe also in dharma. Dharma means deed, righteous deed. How you live your life, family life, life in society. If your karma is based on dharma, you will have good karma. And they also believe in moksha, that is nirvana. That is ultimate salvation from the cycle of birth, death and rebirth. If you have no deeds in which you can be reborn, you get moksha. Now this philosophy, they say that a human being is born handicapped, is born with diseases, maybe because in his previous birth, he did some evil deeds, therefore he's being punished in this world. So this philosophy came up to justify that Almighty God cannot be unjust. But if you read the Vedas, nowhere do the Vedas speak about the cycle of birth, death and rebirth. Nowhere do they speak. Nowhere in the Vedas is the concept of samsara there. What it does mention is the punar janam. Punar in Sanskrit means next or again and janam means birth. So punar janam means next birth or next life. The right translation of punar janam is next life. It doesn't mean life, death, life, death, life. That doesn't mean cycle of death and life. Punar janam, if you translate Sanskrit into English, it means next life. So Vedas have got no problem in agreeing next life. And if you read the Vedas, Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 16, verse number 4 and 5, it speaks about the next life. That there is a next life, but doesn't speak about death and life, death and life. And the Vedas also speak about Swarg, that is paradise, describing that there is rivers flowing beneath of milk, you'll have all kinds of fruit, you'll have peace in Swarg. In several places, in Atharva Ved, book number 2, Atharva Ved, book number 4, book number 6, Rig Ved, book number 10, several places. Rig Ved even speaks about Narak, that is hell, describing somewhat like a fire, a torment of fire for punishment. In several places in Rig Ved, book number 4. So if the concept of Swarg and Narak is there, that after a person dies, he will get a reward and punishment, so what is the requirement of him to come again in this world? So according to the Vedas, the Vedas believe in next life only once. And there, depending upon your deeds, you will either go to paradise, swarg, or narg, that is hell. It doesn't believe in the concept of birth, death, and rebirth, which most of the common Hindus believe. And regarding the logical reply, why Almighty God makes some people handicapped, some people healthy, we will discuss in the concept of life after death in Islam.
In Islam, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 28, that don't you have faith seeing that Allah gave you life when you didn't have life? Then he caused you to die. Then again he'll give you life and to him will you return? Allah says in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allazi khalaqal mawta wal hayata. It is Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. Allah says in Sulaiman Imran chapter 3 verse 185 that Kullu Every soul shall have a taste of death. But the final recompense will be on the day of judgment. And anyone who is saved from the hellfire and enters Jannah, the garden, he has achieved the objective of this world. For this life is nothing but mere chattels of play and amusement. So you are according to Islam, a human being comes in this world only once. And this life is a test for the hereafter. And depending how well you follow the commandments of Almighty God or you don't follow the commandments of Almighty God, based on that, in the next life, in the hereafter, depending which ways more, you will either go to heaven, that is paradise, or hell, that is narq. And the description of paradise, Jannah, in Arabic, Jannah is translated as garden, is given in several places in the Quran. And the concept is similar, that there are rivers flowing beneath rivers of milk and honey, fruits of all kind, you'll have pomegranates, you'll have peace, there will not be any sin. Quran also talks about hell, about Jahannam, similar to the Vedas as torment of hell, whose fuel will be men and stones, Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 23-24. And many places the Quran even speaks about hellfire. So the concept of hell and heaven in Islam is somewhat similar to the concept given in the Vedas. And if you read the Vedas, it is similar to the Islamic concept that you come in this world once and next life, depending upon your deeds, upon your karma, next world you'll either go to hell or heaven. But it disagrees with the common philosophy which the Hindu scholars talk about the samsara. The reason they came up with this philosophy of samsara, as I told you, they could not logically justify that how could Almighty God make some people born in a rich family, some in a poor family, some are born healthy, some are born with congenital defect. The logical reply for this is given in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah an kabut chapter number 29, verse number 2, that do you think just by saying, I believe, Allah will let you go and Allah will not test you? That even if you say that I believe in God, do you think Allah will not test you? You are bound to be tested. Every human being is bound to be tested, Allah says. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 155, that surely we will test you with fear and with hunger, with loss of property, loss of lives, loss of fruits of your toil. And only those will pass, those who are patient and perseverance. That means Almighty God will test you with hunger, with fear, with loss in property, in health, in different things. Allah says in Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 28, that your wealth and your progeny is a test for you. The wealth and the progeny, your children, are a test for you. So in Islam, we believe that this life is a test for the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests different people in different ways. And depending upon the surroundings and the facility Allah gives you, He will test you accordingly. For example, if the question paper is difficult, the teacher corrects the paper leniently. If the question paper is easy, the teacher corrects the paper more strictly. So similarly, depending upon the facility Allah has given you, He will test you accordingly. And Allah says in Surah Anfal, chapter 8, verse number 28, that your wealth is a test for you. Now regarding the logical concept why some people are born in a rich family, some people in a poor family, Allah says wealth is a test for you. The third pillar of Islam is, Every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of that saving in charity every lunar year. So maybe very few rich people will actually give the 2.5% of the excess wealth in charity. Majority may give only part of it. So in charity, they'll get less marks. Some people will not give, so they'll get zero marks. For a poor man, who has a saving of less than 85 grams of gold, he doesn't have to give zakat. So in zakat, he gets full marks. We think, ah, bichara, garib admi, poor man. 
Allah says, wealth is a test for you. And a prophet said, it is difficult for a rich man to enter Jannah. So wealth is a very difficult test. Imagine, in the year 2002, doing examination, a very difficult question comes. In the year 2003, doesn't come. So you should be happy. Good, this question didn't come. We should not cry. But we human beings, we think opposite. You know, he doesn't have wealth, he's a poor man, you know, a sad person. It is good for him, the difficult test of wealth he's not undergoing. If he had the wealth, the test of the wealth is very difficult. Maybe you would have failed. So Allah tests different people in a different way. Regarding the reply, why some people are born healthy, some people are born with disease, with congenital heart defects. Allah says in Surah Anfal, chapter 8, verse 28, that your children are a test for you. So the person who's born, even if he's born handicapped, we in Islam believe every child is masoom, is sinless. We don't believe that the child did some bad deeds in the previous birth, therefore he's born handicapped. We believe every child born in any family, he is sinless, he is masoom. But he may be a test for the parents. The parents may be pious people, may be offering five times salah. Maybe Allah wants to test them further. And if Allah wants to give you a great reward, he has to test you in a higher level. Maybe, for example, if you sit for a graduation in arts, to pass a BA degree in arts is easy. If you pass, you become a graduate. But to pass an MBBS exam is more difficult. But if you pass, you get a doctor. More honor. But the chances of passing MBBS is much less. But if you pass, you get great honor. Similarly, maybe the parents, they are pious people. Almighty God wants to give them Jannat Firdos. Allah wants to test them. That after giving handicapped children, yet do they believe in Almighty God or not? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells different people with health, with disease, with wealth, with poverty, all these are tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who tells different people in different ways. That's the reason there are differences in the human being. It is not because Almighty God is unjust. He is testing different people with different ways and depending upon the facility He has given you, He will reward and punish you accordingly. So this answers the logical concept which the scholars could not realize.